Hey, how's it going guys? This video, I'm going to cover how to work with page object model in Cypress. For those of you that are not familiar with page object model, it basically helps you with reducing code duplication and it helps with easier code maintenance. You can do this by storing your selectors and your methods in a separate file, which can be reused in your test. Now, as per Cypress, they said that you should not use page object model. Instead, you should take advantage of the app actions. Now, there's a full article on this, which I will add the link to the description below. But just to give you a quick overview on that article, essentially what they're saying is that you should take advantage of application actions. Now, what application actions are is that you can dispatch actions directly to your application's internal logic. So to quickly sum up that article, what they are saying is that you should try to use application code to speed up your test instead of always going through UI. For example, if you want your app to be in a certain state, then you can use the app action to get into that state instead of going through the UI, which takes a lot more time. And this can be done using the help of windows.cypress object, which is covered quite well in this article that I will add to the link in the description below. Now here's my take on this. I would say why not use both? Now while I agree 100%, that application action will speed up your test for sure. I will still go ahead and show you how to implement page object model if this is something you are still interested in. Like I said, I personally feel you can use both. Use page objects to store page related details and also access application code to speed up your test as well. If that is an option for you, then it works perfect. So here's the thing, Cypress works best if you have access to your code base and your testing application either in dev mode or in the test mode rather than testing the production state application. For example, in my test application that we have been going through so far, it's a WordPress application and I do not have access to the code base. So I can't use app actions for that particular website, but I can still go ahead and implement page object model. So that is what I will be showing you in this video. So we will be creating a separate page, which will store all of our page objects, such as our page selectors, as well as our page methods. And then we will call that page in our actual test file. Let's go ahead and take a look at how that can be implemented. All right, so I'm back here in VS code, and this is the home file that we have created in our previous videos. So we're going to convert this file to take advantage of the page objects. The very first thing we need to do is create a new page object folder. So here I will add it in under this integration. I'll do new folder and I will name this one page objects. I'm going to create a new file. I will call this one home dot or home dash page dot JS. Now this file will contain all of our selectors as well as our page related methods. So for that, I'm going to create a simple class and I'm going to name this one home page. Then we're going to start storing all of our helper methods here plus our page selector. And before that, I can also export this. So I'm going to do export new or export default new home page. By doing this, we can actually call home page in our home spec file. All right, so now let's take a look at the selectors that we need to store. If I come over here, so first off, we have this side.visit, which is calling this uh, URL right now. So we can actually create a method which will call this side.visit and it will actually call this particular URL right here. Let's do that. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to create a new method. I'm going to call this one open. And I'm going to simply going to do this side.visit and we'll basically call this thing. But to actually call this, what I will do is get rid of this entire thing. And I'm going to do home page, which I just imported right over here. And I'm going to do home page and dot open is the method I just created. So this open will basically call this method right over here. Now, the next thing we're going to do is move over our selectors. So here, I don't see any selector here, which is fine. The next one I see is right here, get started. So we can actually move that over. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to create a new getter function. I'm going to get, get started button. I will add that here. So I can do that by doing return i dot get, and then I can add that. Um, let me skip right over here. There we go. So I just created a getter function. Then I'm returning that sci.get, 
and basically returning that element. So here, instead of doing site.get, I can simply do homepage dot and that I can add in my get started button. So that's it. I'm gonna do homepage dot get started button dot click. Now look at this, right? This is a lot more cleaner because now even if in future someone goes ahead and update that get started button selector, you can simply come in here to your homepage and change this. And wherever this file or this particular uh, getter function is being used, it will get updated automatically. So that's the advantage you get with the help of page object model. Now we can do the similar things for our other selectors as well. Let's see if I scroll down, I have another element right over here. I can copy this entire thing. And this one is a heading text, so I'll just do get heading text. And just same thing, return side.get. Basically add that over there. And this one as well, I'm gonna do homepage dot heading text, and it should have this particular heading. Perfect. And I see that I'm doing it for in other places, uh, same thing over here, like primary menu. I can replace this as well. I'm gonna quickly go ahead and update all the remaining ones as well. All right, so I went ahead and updated all of the other selectors as well. You can notice I created another one, which was primary menu. And same thing we did side.get here and then same thing I did for menu item list element as well. And over here I came in and I updated this. So this is called now homepage.primarymenu.findList element. And then this one is homepage.menu item list dot it should have blah blah blah. And I just realized I made a typo here. I should do this. All right. So now we have went ahead and updated all of our selectors. We have added it in our homepage file and we have also created this helper method here open which will call our um, this particular homepage. Actually, let's try to run this and see if this would work for us. But to run, I'm just gonna do npx cypress open. Now, the reason this is also showing up over here is because of the page objects I've added under integration folder. So I can actually take this out and move it under the cypress folder. I'll move it over here. Now, this way, if we rerun this, I'll close this, and I'm gonna update my imports as well. Right, so I'm gonna rerun this. Now this time we should not see that page object showing up over there because obviously that was not a test, right? So we shouldn't see this. We should only see the test that we have created. This is good. Now we're gonna we're gonna run our home.spec.js. So there you go, guys. We just ran our test and it all successfully passed. Everything is still the same. We're still using those element over here. So then nothing really changed. The only difference is now instead of putting all of those elements here, which we, we could have been using like or duplicating this in multiple places, we have all stored it in a single place, which we can call it from our home spec file over here. Now this homepage file can be reused in another files as well if needed. And that's the advantage you get with page objects, which basically means that you can reuse your page objects in another places as well. So you are reducing your overall code duplication as well as it helps you with your code maintenance as well. Now in that Cypress article, you're gonna find that they will say, do not do this. So the reason for this is that this adds an extra layer on top of your actual test. So for someone that are not familiar with what's actually happening on the homepage, they will have to now go to homepage and take a look at what exactly is happening here. I feel like, yeah, I agree with that, that that is true, but there's a balance to this that we can work with. Like you do not have to create a really complicated page objects, which is going through like multiple inheritance level. If you create a simple homepage file like this, or maybe a little bit more complicated where you have another component file, which is calling this homepage, then I think up to that level is okay. But if we, I agree with what they are trying to say is like, you do not want to create your test that is really complicated which is going into multiple inheritance level and it makes it really hard to maintain that kind of code. But I feel like as long as you maintain your page structure like this, taking advantage of page objects will definitely help you with reducing your overall code duplication and it will help you with your maintenance as well. So similarly guys, you can go ahead and implement the same thing for this form spec as well if you have created this file. So just create a same form-page.js and update all of the selectors over here and move it over there. And if you want, you can create some helper functions as well for this particular file as well. I will leave that as, as an exercise for you guys to do this. If you get stuck, feel free to leave a comment and I can help you out with that. That's it for this video, guys. This is how you can work with page objects model in Cypress if this is something you are interested in. 
Now, like I said, this works for me because my website, I do not have access to internal code of the actual application. If you do have access to the internal code, then you can take advantage of app actions as well. Essentially, you can put your application in a certain state where you don't have to go through a UI to actually get to that point. Instead, you can just directly use, for example, if you want your application in a logged in state, you can set that up in by using the help of app action so that your application is already logged in. And then you're simply going in and actually doing whatever you want to do from there. In my case, I have to do this through UI because I do not have access to my um, application code. That's how I'm actually doing this. So thank you for watching this video, guys. If you'd like to support my work, there are a few ways to do that. The easiest is by liking and sharing this video as well as subscribing to this channel if you haven't already. And you can also support me by joining my monthly membership on YouTube by clicking on the join button below. There you will find multiple membership levels which comes with some great perks. Please take a look at that and pick the one that works out best for you. That's all for now guys, I will see you all in the next one.